the day. Today we have Michael Quinn, who is one of five candidates for two spots on a three-year term on the Pembroke School Committee. Welcome. Thank you for having me here today, Julie. I'm that was excited a, to do this interview. That was this a mouthful. <laughs> <You know? laughs> okay, Pembroke School Committee. First question, yes. we're going to dig right in. Oh, all right. How do you determine your budget priorities given the mandates that you have no control over and the state funding which has not been finalized? Mm -hmm. So start with that part. Yeah, we go through a long process starting in probably the fall of the previous year. Um, we have the principals of each school put together, um, d decide their wants and needs mm -hmm. that they need for each school. Mm -hmm. Uh, then they tier them into tier one needs, which is something that they absolutely want, need this year. Mm -hmm. Tiers two and three, which is stuff that they could use. Um, they'd like to have if we have it in the budget. Yep. We do the same with all the department heads. All the various department heads do the same. Yep. So we have our, you know, our arts and visual medium, our sports, yep. uh, our, our sports director, our, I'm sorry, athletic director. Um, all, all of them, uh, special ed, they all get to, they all you know, do the same thing. They get their, uh, figure out their wants and needs as tier one, tier two, tier, tier three. three. Yep. And we go through and we, we discuss, they give a presentation to us, each of them, mm -hmm. presents to us early, uh, early from probably January up through March. Okay. They present to us and um, then the subcommittee, the finance subcommittee goes through and yep. discusses it yep. and then makes recommendations to us. To you. And then yep. you, you guys will have the final say. And on then it. we have final vote. Yep. Okay. Okay. So let me ask you something else. Mm -hmm. Every single uh, department head in every school um, creates their own kind of proposal for you. Mm -hmm. Where do you prioritize? Let's say all the proposals are fabulous. They're all wonderful. Everyone's asking for everything that they should get approved. How do you prioritize what you will actually say, yes, I can vote for that? It's got to be, well, starting out, it's got to be a need. An absolute need. Yep. We get those, you know, we, we, we have all the needs done first. And then it's a matter of, you know, working, having discussions, working with the superintendent. Superintendent's very good at knowing what is very important to them. Mm -hmm. And we, we discuss during the meetings and we figure out really what, what is the, the actual priorities, what needs to be, you know, what needs to be done, um, what's more important than others. Mm -hmm. And, um, and like I said, it's also a lot of it is worked out in subcommittee as well. And then we, we vote on what is the most efficient budget that okay. we can uh, And that, that we you can all have to agree upon. Right. Yep. Okay. Now, what do you do with the fact that you don't know yet what you're going to get from the state per pupil? We usually have How do you a, do a budget when you don't know the, the number? It's very, it, it makes it a little bit more difficult. I will say that. We do have a pretty good idea by that time of, of what we'll be getting. Uh, we, we won't have exact numbers, mm -hmm. but there'll be a, 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 a ballpark. Range, park. okay. Yeah. Okay. And we're always able to, you know, if our budget comes up, the, if the dollar comes up a little bit short, we're always able to kind of move things around and, mm -hmm. and get that, make it work out in the end. Okay. There's always some, we can always find a way to, like I said, move things around. Okay. Make it work out. Okay. Um, what about the decrease in school enrollment? Now, how, if you have a, a, a constituent that comes up to you and says, mm -hmm. you know, why, why is the budget going up and yet we have less and less kids in the school? How do you answer that question? There's a, a, a few answers to that is that um, one is obviously inflation. Everybody's talked about that, especially since, uh, since COVID. We, yeah. had, we saw a lot of inflation from 2020 to really 2022, but mm. we're still seeing higher than average inflation every year. And education inflation has actually been higher than uh, COI inflation. So that's, that's added to it. That's a, that's a big thing. Two is we're providing more services now to the kids. And part of the reason is that is, is COVID. Mm -hmm. um, part of the reason is that we're finding now the kids need a lot more, a lot more help. We're, we're finding that um, there is... Uh, you know, they're in the school all day. That's where they spend most of their day. Right. And we need to make it as, as good experience for all the kids as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. So we are providing, we do have social workers at, mm -hmm. at the schools. We do have all of those, those types of uh, services available to the, to the kids in the school now. And um, I would say, say third on top of that is 
and this may be a result of COVID, it may not be, but there's an increase in IEPs, there's been Yeah, we'll have a separate, we'll, we'll in, talk about, uh, about special ed in okay. a separate <laughs> question, because that's, that's a whole other topic, obviously. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's, let's go on to the question number two. The discussion of vocational schooling is not new to Pembroke. Mm -hmm. The Pathways program is a start, mm -hmm. but certainly not the total solution. Right. What planning and initiatives do you think are needed now and why? Well, so I am on the uh, exploratory committee yeah. for, Voc for VOTEC. Um, I think we need to really be focusing on South Shore VOTEC. We can do VOTEC. They, they, you know, we could patch something together. It's not going to be that great, and we're mm -hmm. going to spend a lot of money if we do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think if we buy into South Shore VoTech, or now it's South Shore Technical, yep. um, we're getting a high-quality program. They're, they're renovating their building. They're ba we basically have a new state-of-the-art building with 14, I believe it's 14 programs, it might be a little bit more than that, available to the kids that we can take advantage of. Mm -hmm. We're part of that district. Now, uh, do you have to buy into that? Do you have to help with the cost of the expansion of VOTEC? Yes. Okay, so that's one cost separate from what it would cost to actually send the, the Pembroke over. students yeah. there. So talk about those two different avenues of, of funding. Yep. So we do have to buy in. We would have to pay for part of the new build. Um, our percentage of that will be determined. It's going to be hmm, ballpark of maybe 9%, 10 11% or so of the their total cost, cost? yes, okay. because we would be the tenth uh, dis we would be the tenth town to join the district. So okay. we'll split it up. It's going to be apportioned out based on the number of students yep. that each town sends. Yep, that makes um, sense. They're estimating what we'd send based on the number of students we have mm -hmm. and the demand for VOTEC. So, like I said, it'll be somewhere in the nine, ten, eleven, and twelve how, percent range how, of the cost. How soon would you have to pay that that percentage? That would be coming out over the course of of years. They would be. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of a formula that they've worked out to it. Um, so year one, if we get in, mm -hmm. say we send uh, 20 kids mm -hmm. to the school, um, we're going to pay the percentage based okay. on the number of students okay. that we have. And so it's, keep not, going. it's not X amount of million dollars right off the bat has to go no. towards this building. Okay. No, they're going to have us pay it over the number of years. I think it, I don't quote me on this. I believe it was over the course of about seven years okay. or so. So that's, that's just, that's if, if the town if decides in, yes. and you get voted in, do the other towns that are already there have to say, yes, Pembroke students, yes. we will allow you to come in? Yeah, so they're going to be starting their um, meetings, I believe, in next January to decide if they want us to come in. We would need to get six out of the nine towns to vote us in. Okay. And then, you know, we could, um, and then we would bring, our, bring it to town meeting. Right. So the, what will happen is we'll be discussing this in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, in a perfect world, I'm talking to the other school committee members, mm -hmm. and we're able to, you know, come to a consensus on bringing it to the town. Mm -hmm. If we, I think there's a little bit of a misconception about us being able to just say, oh, let's have the town vote for it. Right. It's, it, doesn't it doesn't work, work like that. that. Way. No. Okay. If we vote to bring it to town meeting, that yep. means that we've given it our rubber stamp of approval. Okay. We've done our due diligence. Yep. We support it. And the school has supported you coming into there. Exactly, right. yes. So before it goes well, to town meeting, you have to be approved by, by some them, sort of yes. right? What, okay. we, what I would hope to do, and what I think we would hope to do, is have our meetings in the school committee in the fall. Yep. Have our school committee approve it so that when the other towns start meeting in January, that they can see how serious we are. Okay. And they'll vote you're for ready it. ready to go. Okay. And then we can bring it to, to town meeting. Okay. So if all that works, and that mm -hmm. all happens... And students from Pembroke are allowed to go to South Shore VOTEC or whatever it's called now. Um, <laughs> when would that start? That would start in fall of 26. Fall of 2026. Yeah. And do you, do you have any estimation of how many students would want to apply for that program? And is it a four-year program? It would be a four-year program. We would accept, they would be accepted right in freshman year. Okay. Um, it's an estimate right now. What's but, the know, estimate? I would guess initially probably roughly 20, 25 students okay. in the first year. Okay. Could be more than that. But I could see us having, you know, over the course of four years, you know, maybe we start 20, 25, we get upwards Increase. of like 40 a yeah. year or so right, once right. kids realize that the option is yep. there. 
And you have to pay for their actual schooling also. Right. So you have yes. to pay almost like the tuition. Right. And then you also would have to pay for transportation. Yes, those okay. are part of the. Uh, so those are unfunded mandates yeah, from so the state. Yes, so that's that's a that's a biggie. And right. Do we know that per pupil number right now, or is that not even known? The tuition is roughly about nineteen. 19,000, just under, maybe just under 20 per student. Okay. Uh, the transportation, I don't have numbers on that just yet. Okay. But we are sending kids to Aggie, uh, Norfolk Agricultural in Which is Walpole. Way far away, yeah. Yeah, and okay. I would say the transportation cost would be a lot less than what, okay. what that is. Okay. So definitely more to, more to come on this. Yes. This whole subject. There'll be more information coming okay. out, definitely. Okay. So let's talk about special education. Okay. So what is your philosophy on special ed, and do you believe that the uptick in students requiring additional services is an anomaly or actually the future of K through 12 in Pembroke schools? Yeah, that is a really good question. And we, we kind of had a short discussion on this at uh, one of our meetings, a couple meetings ago. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's, a, there's been a rise in language language English, English sorry, language, yeah. English yeah. language learners. learners, yeah. So I'm not an English teacher. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's been a rise in that. I don't know if that's going to continue. I would imagine it probably would. Now, those are kids that don't speak English as their first language? Right. Okay, so yes. we need to support them by teaching them English. Exactly. Okay. Yep, okay. They, live in our, they live in our town. They're part of the, the public school system. They, they, they need to have the tools to be mm -hmm. able to succeed. Is this a, a new population within the town? It's been rising. I don't know if it would be a new population, but it, it's been rising over the years. I want to say that um, we, we had a stat in, in one of our meetings about uh, two months ago, a uh, number of uh, English language learners, I was able to say it that time, went from about 60 to 79 over the course of and this four is years. K through 12? Yes. Okay, okay. Yep. All right, so that's one, one group of people that need the, the English language. Ed. Yep, yep, yep. What else? And then as far as... Um, Special ed students, we're seeing, you know, obviously an increase in IEPs. Um, Which is an individual educational plan. Yes. And that's based on a learning deficit or an yeah, identified learning the, issue right. that you want to give the student a little bit more time Some with more, or support exactly. with. Okay. Yep. And okay. that those they're all that's all set by the state, I believe. Okay. And um, we're seeing a, we've seen a rise in that. And it's it's to be determined, I think, if that's you know, an after effect of, of, of shutting things down for COVID mm -hmm. or if that's going to be the new thing. I think it's somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. I think now we're able to identify issues better than we had been and more willing to deal with them mm -hmm. than we were before. So, you know, but I, I do also think that some of it is is a byproduct of COVID. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you, know, one, right. you know, it's hard to say exactly. But the cost of special education in in Pembroke has increased dramatically. Yeah, yeah. So to those residents out there or voters out there that say, look, we kind of have to take care of the, the majority of the students, mm -hmm. and the majority of the students don't need special education, and yet an awful lot of the budget is going towards them. What do you say to that mindset? Uh, we're required to... to give them the tools that they need. We're, required, we're required to educate special ed students as well. I mean, that's not a choice. That's, that's by a law. mandate, yes. Right, by law. Okay. Yep. And it's an unfunded mandate. Exactly, yeah. And unfunded mandates this year roughly are, are, cost, are going to cost us around $5.5 It's roughly just under 20% of our, our total budget. That's just not special ed. That's just unfunded mandates. Right. I mean, all the various In, in general, right. Yep. Is there any talk about going to the state and saying you need to start funding these unfunded mandates that you're making us do? We've talked about it at meetings. Um, it's something that we talk about here and there, but we haven't really organized. I know that there have been some representatives that have talked about it in our, our meetings. Yeah. What we'd hope to do is, and what we really should do, is, is to start concentrating on working with them more to, to kind of... Um, to bring it up more when they're in Boston, uh, especially in the towns, because the way the Chapter 70 funding goes... Um, Which is what you get per pupil, correct? Yeah, Chapter 70 funding is what the state is, is giving us. Mm -hmm. um, and our Chapter 70 funding, being in Pembroke, has just not been... It's historically it's, been low. Yeah, it's yeah. not keeping up with yeah. the, the, rate of, the rate of the cost of, of education. Does Chapter funding increase if you have more and more students that are... Um, qualified for special education programs? Um, 
it, there is a Student Opportunities Act. I think that was more of, of low-income type students, yeah. though. Um, we do get some money based on special ed students. Mm -hmm. We get a certain uh, dollar amount, but we have to pay everything that's above that above dollar that. amount. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where that's the unfunded yeah. part of it. Okay. So you, you think that this, this, this whole idea, the whole special education process is here to stay, and you're just going to try to refine it as best you can? What I would say is... I think it would be the, the best thing is if we could get some of these mandates, these unfunded mandates or underfunded mandates funded. Mm. You know, we have to work together. And I think what it'll require, what it'll take us is really maybe talking to other school committees, banding together in various towns, having our representatives, maybe our, our state senator um, in, our, in our district, mm -hmm. really advocate for us. The small towns, especially on the South Shore, are, are taking a hit now because... The, the Chapter 70 funding isn't there because we're not we're not increasing the student population right. enough that it's it, that the Chapter 70 funding is really helping us. So the towns are spending more yeah. on the school budget than they used to, com, you know, compared to the state. Right, and the towns are spending more on the school budget than they used to with less students. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So it's you can understand the people that don't have kids in the schools. Right. For all of our towns are like. What's up with this? Yeah, I mean, the question we get a lot is the the, the number of students has, has decreased. Yeah. Why isn't the budget decreasing right. as well? And, I mean, the, you know, the answer to that is, you know, we, we have actually, over the years, adjusted our, our personnel to that. We have um, adjusted the programs that we offer, mm -hmm. but the costs keep rising. Right. You know, like I said, we did have a massive bout of inflation over a few years. There were more children that need more services than mm -hmm. they had before. The cost of transportation yep. has risen dramatically. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a simple question of, oh, there's you know, X amount less students, the budget should drop. Right. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't it's not happening. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, so more to come on special ed, I'm sure. Yes. Okay, here's the fourth question. There are often two very different sides mm -hmm. to a subject matter and that might come before the school committee. An example in January, a public meeting was held in regards to political and social advocacy. Mm -hmm. And it was a very long, um, interesting meeting to watch. It was over three hours long. Can you kind of give a summation of what that meeting was about and how you feel the outcome was? Yeah, <clears throat> so that meeting was about a uh, proposal to really take pride flags out of classrooms, move them into um, common areas uh, the, with the idea that it wanted to make the classroom more uh, politically neutral. Mm -hmm. Was it just pride flags or was it any flags? Well, this is, this is what yeah, seems most, to be a real... It's the, yeah, don't. this is what people don't... We already have rules in effect keeping the class neutral. And those rules include banning political flags. So okay. there's no Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter. There's no, you know, uh, Ukrainian flags. I don't think any of that stuff, unless it pertains to the subject matter that's being taught. Mm -hmm. um, with this, I don't believe that the pride flag falls under the political mm -hmm. banner. So it wasn't included mm -hmm. in, that, in that rule, in that, in that policy. So... In that, um, so really, in reality, what this proposal was about was moving, and I, and I read this, you know, word for word on, on, on something else that said that they were looking to move the flags out of the class and into, I believe it was into the hallways or into so the not, common So not areas. out of the schools completely, just move them into a more neutral area that wasn't part of the learning experience. Right, yes. Okay. So what, what ended up happening in that meeting? What ended up happening is we ended up voting it down. Uh, we actually what, voted four to nothing. What was what was the proposal that you were voting on? There was a proposal that um, it was a longer proposal. Yeah. And there was a, there was a lot more detail to it. There was like five main points, and I'm trying to remember them all together. I remember that there was one point that said that um, student groups could use the pride flag, but they had to sign it out and we'd keep a log, we'd have to approve it, keep a log. Um, there was another part of it that said that only 
uh, teachers could only wear um, pins or, or what have you of groups that they identify mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. So, and it, there was there was three other parts, and I can't remember what they were now at the, mm -hmm. at this point. But um, looking at that, I mean, right there, those were just two parts to it that I just couldn't agree to for mm -hmm. one. And I think it was really meant to be a framework to talk about it, but it just, it, it was not something that, you know, the rest of us were all willing to move along with. Now, does it have to do with um, teachers or students, what they have on their t-shirts or what they, what pins they have on their backpacks? I mean, what, how, how far does... The students... Was, was the pre, was, what, is, what is the idea behind this? Is it... Is it if you're in this if you're in the classroom, really the only flag is the American flag? Is that is that? It's funny because that's not what came up in the meeting. Okay. Um, in the examples for the meeting, and I believe that the uh, the the policy that was, or I'd call it a framework that was proposed, was not supposed to affect the students at all. The students mm -hmm. could still do what they want. They could still have pins on their bags or mm -hmm. what have you. It was really in regards to the teachers. Mm -hmm. um, as far as, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there. That's okay. It, it was. It was more. The question was the students. Um, it's almost like the First Amendment rights. You know, mm -hmm. I can wear a T-shirt that says something I believe in, and, and I can show up in class. And yeah. So the teachers. I mean, sorry. The students could do what they wanted. The teachers would not have been allowed to mm -hmm. unless they identified with that group, which I think was part of, which I think was the most difficult part of that uh, that proposal or framework mm -hmm. because then you're looking at if teachers wanted to wear a rainbow pin or mm -hmm. what have you mm -hmm. they basically have to out themselves if people don't know their you know what their what their so they couldn't wear is. one just to be in in concert with maybe some students right that's them. according okay. to so the, that was that was the yeah the, the point of it do you think this issue has been resolved we voted it down and as, as far as I'm concerned, that's it. We're not bringing it up again. You know, the town came out. They didn't want, they didn't want it to go through. Um, we voted four to nothing to, to, to put it down. So as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's been voted on. And so the proposal to move any kind of flags or whatever they were from the classroom to a neutral space is the thing that you voted down. Yeah. So whatever is currently the, the policy is what's going to continue. Yeah, and we're, we're actually refining the policy a little bit to make it clearer for parents because I okay. think there was an issue. So where I stood on this is if you think that the teachers are not teaching or are teaching with a, um, with a bias... Mm -hmm. Moving the flag out of the classroom doesn't resolve that. Mm -hmm. I don't believe. You know, I, I think you, <clears throat> I think it's a matter of finding, you know, parents or students that are willing to speak up about it and have specific instances. Mm -hmm. Didn't have much of that. You know, there was a couple things, they were resolved, which to me shows that the policy has been working. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking to do now is we're, um, we're just kind of refining the policy. We're taking a couple different policies that we already had, combining them into one, and then putting in the policy for how to escalate a complaint. Mm -hmm. So you start out by going to the principal. If you yeah. don't get that resolved, you go to the yep. superintendent. And so a student could make a complaint, a teacher could a make a complaint, or a, a, parent. a parent, but yep. a teacher can't. Um, Teachers aren't allowed to weigh in on this, really? I mean, they, well, to us, uh, that's a very good question, actually. We didn't really talk about that. We really only talked about students yeah, or Yeah, it's the teachers uh, that parents. are doing the teaching, and I'm sure they're right. the ones that's hearing most of this. Yeah, no, that's a very good point. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say that you know our policy right now is really a handbook for the, the students or the parents to okay. complain if they feel that. Okay. But it is a good, that's a good point that you brought up. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to let you now take about two, two minutes to talk to the constituents out there and tell them why they should vote for you. To reiterate, I'm Mike Quinn. I'm uh, running for re-election of school committee. I was appointed to school committee last year Janu in January of 23. Over the course of the past uh, almost a year and a half, I've gained a lot of experience. It's become a lot clearer to me what the role of school committee is, um, how hard it can be to make the tough decisions, and how important it is to have someone who can take emotion out of the, out of the equation 
and just vote for the right thing for the students every time. <clears throat> it does take, as, as anyone has told me, it takes about a year or so to learn this job. So I've gained valuable experience in the last year. I also believe that I have the financial experience needed to help us navigate through the complicated budget uh, constraints that we're going to be seeing over the next couple of years. And I have the passion about VOTEC education to move that forward and, and work <clears throat> to move that forward and to get it passed. I really hope that you will, um, and I think, I've, I'm sorry, I've also proven through my votes that I'm an independent thinker, that I'm able to analyze the data that I see in front of me and vote accordingly. Every time I voted, I've made sure that I vote in, for the health of the school system and uh, for the advantage to the town, as well as what's best for the kids every single time. I hope you'll vote for me on, uh, on May 18th, and I want to thank you for having me here today, Julie. Well, thank you very much, and we wish you best of luck in your campaign and in, during this election season. And please do make your voices heard by voting on or before May 18th in the Pembroke town elections. Thank you, and good day.